Okay, so 52 Pi have sent me an armor case to test, armor case V5 for the Pi 5. And uh, this is an aluminium case, and you can see it's got these little heat sinks on the top here. But also it's got all these raised bits to touch on the key components that are there. Now it does come with thermal pads uh, and some screws and an Allen key, but I'm going to use thermal paste because it's more effective. And I'm also going to do this as a much longer test. So normally I don't test for very long, uh, but I've had some comments about uh, how the Pi 5 doesn't have an ability to stay cool uh, without active cooling. So I thought, let's try it with some passive cooling. I'm going to use it with VNC as my remote desktop and just leave it over several days and see how hot it gets. So first up, I've got to work out all the components that it touches. Uh, so you can see, well, I could just put the thermal paste on all of these bits. Uh, that would do the job. I like the way this is cut out to match the CPU. So you can see it's got this uh, sort of raised bit in the middle. So all of that is gonna, is gonna touch on perfectly. So like this. So let's put some thermal paste on all these bits. So let's put a tiny bit on the ethernet transceiver, the RP1 chip, the RAM, the CPU, and the PMIC, which stands for Power Management Integrated Circuit. So that's this bit here. So let's place that together. Uh, in fact, I think I'm gonna put it in here first. So this way around. Oh, I might have forgotten the thermal pad. So let's take this bit off and this bit goes inside. That's actually really quite thick. That's better. Okay, so that's the four bolts in. There's no rubber feet on this. I always wonder why they don't include rubber feet because it definitely makes it just feel nicer really. So let's put an SD card in and see how that fits. This is my uh, VNC SD card. So basically the one I leave if I want something is remote access. So let's pop that in. Oh yeah, and the SD card is definitely accessible because you can use your nail to pull that out. Uh, the power button, there's no raised button that I can see, which I have in some other cases. So you've got to poke something in there to switch it on. But again, this is one I'm going to leave on long term. So I'm not really worried about that. The controls, this is well thought out. So basically this is recessed. So sometimes you do definitely get some cases that are a little bit thick and the HDMI cables need a bit of sort of jiggling to get them to work, but that's recessed. So that's fine. All this is accessible, obviously. So let's get it plugged in. Now my main use uh, for Pi is always over here. So I'm gonna put it on this LG monitor and generally I'll leave the monitor off because it's remote access. So let's grab the ethernet cable. HDMI and USB-C. As I say, I'm just gonna leave this on for several days with P sensor running so I can see how hot it gets. Just like that. So let's switch on. And we can see the lights are still visible. There we go, so that started up. So I now have access to my Pi. So this is on my iPad now. So let's open a terminal and let's run NeoFetch and just check that I haven't overclocked this. I don't think I have. No, 2.4 gigahertz, so standard clock speed. Let's run P sensor. So P sensor, and let's launch that. Let's bung that down the bottom for now. Good thing about P sensor though is that it remembers where you got to. So it will remember the highest temperature that this Pi achieved. Uh, and also NeoFetch will tell me how long it's been running. So you can see it's been running for two minutes at the moment. So let's get it to do some updates. So call up the keyboard and I would imagine I've done an update recently. sudo raspi config sudo apt update. It's probably up to date actually. Oh no, there is some updates to do. And let's do sudo apt full upgrade. And let's say yes to that. And I'll try and come back periodically just to test it.
but I'm not going to switch it off. I'm going to put a sticker over it so it reminds me. And I have got a video about VNC if you're interested in remotely accessing your desktop from another computer. Okay, so a decent amount of time has passed and I've been using my Pi remotely. Uh, so when I was at work yesterday, I actually used it loads. Uh, so let's show some of the things that I've been doing. Let's switch into screen capture. So we can see that the maximum temperature it's got to is 48 degrees. It's been doing a lot of downloading. So I downloaded this 34 gig file yesterday, uh, which is, and if I open up the web browser again remotely, so I did all this remotely. Uh, if I go into my history, I've been doing all sorts of things and uh, having a look around at various different sites. So we go to PyMega. Now obviously the video is not going to play great because it's remotely, so I'll pause that anyway. Um, but there is a file to download PyMega. I've reviewed previous versions on the Pi 4. I think this works on the Pi 5. I'm sure uh, Chris mentioned it in the video, but uh, I'll be giving it a try. So I need to unzip that remotely. Uh, so I'll be doing that. Uh, it's, uh, as I say, 34 gig file. I don't know if I've got enough space actually to unzip it on there. So I might have to plug in some external storage. What have I got? Yeah, I've only got 32 and a half gig free. So I'm going to have to unzip that to a USB stick. So I'll, I'll plug a USB stick in uh, to do that. I've been playing around with uh, folders. So I've, I've deleted some operating systems I didn't need. Uh, I've downloaded some games, I've unzipped those games, so I've done a lot of that sort of thing. Uh, but I've also, you'll notice my NAS drive is on here. So remotely I've been rearranging my NAS drive, renaming some files, deleting a load of things that didn't need to be on there that were out of date, things like that. Uh, and so all of that, uh, you know, I've been using it as a computer and I'm really happy that the temperature really hasn't gone that high. Uh, where I have it set up, it is in a cupboard. And when I open the doors to my cupboard, because I have various different technology in there, uh, it's definitely the warmer part of the house. So my daughter was home yesterday, so she had the heating set to probably 20 degrees or above. So that cupboard would have been warmer than that. So, you know, warmer than this house would normally be. And yet the temperature has been absolutely fine. And as I say, I've been doing all sorts of things on it. So I'll unzip this file to a USB stick. In fact, I'll plug in that USB stick now. So I've just plugged in a, uh, I think it's a four terabyte drive. So if I open that up, I'm going to unzip it to here. And also uh, yesterday I installed uh, Qubit Torrent because uh, the one I had on there transmission didn't work. So again, remotely I installed Qubit Torrent and all that worked all right. So you can see I've got the old PyMega here, PyMega 2. So let's do a new folder. Hi, Mega 4, and remotely it was actually fine. Um, so it, it, it feels really responsive, even so when I'm not at home and I'm using it over a work network. Uh, so when I was on my break, I was doing all sorts of things, and it did feel pretty native. Uh, again, video wasn't good, web browser's a bit sluggish, but a lot of this sort of stuff was fine. Right, so let's go into the downloads folder, and I guess if we open this file first, and if we copy both, can we just drag them over to that new folder? So PyMega 4, it looks like it's doing it. It's obviously gonna take a while, so I'll let that do its thing. I'd expect the temperature probably to go up a bit because uh, you know this is a big file, it's unzipping, but we'll see. Uh, now while it's doing that, if I run NeoFetch just to show there's the qubit torrent uh, installation, sudo apt install qubit torrent. But if I run NeoFetch, so the Pi has been running for one day and 10 hours, nearly 11 hours. And also, if I go back to the web browser, I'm making it work hard now. Uh, if I go to MotionEye, I've got CatCam set up, uh, which is basically uh, MotionEye OS on a Raspberry Pi 2.0. And if I click on here, we can see that I've got some videos of my cat coming and going at various different times. Where is he? Ah, here we go. So there is my cat coming in through the cat flap. <laughs> it's a tunnel because it's quite a thick wall. And also another camera I've got set up is uh, my doorbell, which is pointed at my 3D printer. And there you go. 
So there's some of my bikes and my 3D printer is in here somewhere. So let's close down the web browser. I'll just let it do that unzipping. I don't need the terminal open either. Uh, I shall leave that open so other people, if they're downloading Pymega, uh, can have access to that. And obviously Pymega will be a video in the future. So 50 degrees we're up to, but yeah, nothing to worry about. Nowhere near thermal throttling. And I can just quit out of that. And I can pick it up on my phone, on the uh, Five Tab Duo that I've been using at work, on my iPad, uh, and just remotely access it. It is excellent. So just an update from my car if the audio sounds a bit weird. Uh, let's launch VNC and uh, let's see if that file has unzipped. Well, it was ages ago, so it should be fine. It's going to go a bit slower because it's running on my mobile network through my phone. Here we go. So if I go to my drive that's plugged in uh, and I go for the Pymega folder, let's see how big that file is. So let's double click it and right click on the image and properties. Yeah, 96 gig. So I need to write that to an SD card or a USB stick. You can see that my uh, Qubit Torrent is still going and it's uploading that Pymega to other people. And if I check the terminal just to see how long it's been up and running. So it does something weird when I do the keyboard, but basically I can see a keyboard in front of me at the moment. So if I press up until I get near fetch and press return, we can see how long it's been up and running. One day, 18 hours and 24 minutes. And the temperature's got to 58 degrees, so nothing to worry about at this time. And it has been doing a lot, unzipping, downloading, web browser, all sorts of things. So really impressed with how this has been working. I've still got my four terabyte drive plugged in. Uh, it's still only got to 58 degrees. Feels pretty cool at the moment. It's only 39, 37 degrees. And it's still using Qubit Torrent and it's still uploading files at the moment. So it's been constantly on two days and 11 hours and 10 minutes and in fact if I refresh it uh, 15 minutes and uh, yeah it's it's working great really really happy with it it hasn't needed to thermal throttle at all uh, everything has been working really well as a remote desktop so say I've unzipped that huge file I've been downloading I've been uploading uh, I've uh, unzipped things done a lot of organizing and things like that and and it's been been a pleasure to use I can check cat cam and uh, see what my cat is doing at various different times of the day. Or false alarm. And then a minute later. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> nice squeeze through there. So yeah, great case from 52Pi. In my opinion, you can get away with passive calling on a Raspberry Pi 5. Obviously, if you're gonna play PlayStation 2 games for three or four hours overclocked at three gigahertz, you may find that the unit will thermal throttle, but under normal use, absolutely fine. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.